Hello and welcome to the Friday, August 18th, 2023 edition of the Sand and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jesse took a quick look today at a problem that's actually kind of common when you're looking at text on the command line in Linux with tools like cat. The problem is that the white space characters are often not clearly displayed and so two strings that kind of look the same may not be the same because they have white space characters following them. Well, uh, Jesse is looking at a couple different options to solve the problem with a little Python script or, well, a simple cat option dash capital A, which will make these white space characters more obvious. And Apple security company Yamf has an interesting blog post showing how an attacker may be able to simulate airplane mode in an iOS 16 device. The problem here is that, well, a user may think that they are safe if the phone is in airplane mode, but uh, what the attacker is really doing here is essentially just displaying the airplane mode icon, and with that, the user may feel safe if indeed they are not. The attack actually goes sort of a step further. In addition to setting the airplane mode icon, the attack will also disconnect connect all software from the internet and if a user for example now attempts to use the email software or the like it will alert the user hey you need to set up a network connection do you want to connect to wi-fi so a behavior that's identical to what you would experience if the phone is actually in airplane mode and of course the attacker is at the same time also able to still maintain a connectivity for their own application pretty neat trick this is a post exploit technique so the attacker already has control over your phone but is now attempting to to hide the fact that they do have this control and still able to exfiltrate data. Threat intelligence company Cyber and uh, published a blog post stating that uh, they believe to see a larger attack against LinkedIn accounts. LinkedIn accounts have always been sort of kind of a popular target. Usually phishing is being used to gain access to accounts or just credential stuffing, a password a brute forcing. Apparently the same thing is happening here and apparently the increase in attacks also leads to a longer than usual response time from LinkedIn if customers are asking them for help. Of course, your best defense here is some form of two-factor authentication, which I believe LinkedIn supports. You should also be suspicious of any email coming from LinkedIn. Now, there is a scenario here that I'm a little bit worried about. If LinkedIn detects an unusual account behavior, like someone trying to brute force your account, they may temporarily lock the account, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it will also send you an email that your account is locked. So there is a chance that an attacker will actually lock your account and then, well, send their own email in addition to LinkedIn's. And it may not be that obvious which one is the right one, which of course then will lead, lead to a phishing. And to some individuals, well, their LinkedIn account is apparently worth enough to actually pay a ransom for it. Again, if your account is that much worth, then please enable two-factor authentication. A little bit catching up on DEF CON here. A PhD student from Northeastern University, Dennis Giese, presented an interesting talk about robot vacuums and how they possibly are violating your privacy and are exfiltrating uh, data. Quite interesting, I find in this particular presentation is that he demonstrated how some of these robot vacuums, even though they do have certifications from well-known organizations, they still violate their own privacy uh, statements. Dennis points out one particular vendor here that states that nothing is ever duplicated, nothing is ever stored, and nothing is sent to the cloud. But, well, diving deeper, deeper into the robot, that doesn't appear to be quite true. You can access, for example, a camera. Also, uh, some sort of PR work here by some of these companies where instead of camera, they just refer to 
optical sensors, for example. Nice also about the talk that it covers a wide range of vendors. This is not necessarily just one particular vendor's issue and goes into some depth into how these devices were rooted in order to get access to firmware to verify some of these findings. Pretty good talk. I'll link uh, probably to the slides directly or to Dennis's homepage, which also sort of has a link to a very extensive list of vacuums and what exact sensors and hardware they are built around. Well, this is it for today. Thanks again for making it with me through another week. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.